In this video, you are going to learn the cost comparison between bricks and hollow blocks and by the end of this video, you will be able to clearly understand which one is cost friendly either using hollow blocks or bricks. For all users, the method is simple and easy to understand. You will learn when and where you are supposed to use either bricks or hollow blocks and also the advantages comparison between bricks and hollow blocks while putting strength, stability and durability into consideration. So be sure to watch this video till the end. Let's first clearly understand what bricks and hollow blocks mean. So this is a brick. It is a single unit building material used in masonry construction either made from clay or mud. Clay bricks look like this whereas mud bricks look like this. A clay brick wall looks like this whereas a mud brick wall looks like this. Blocks look like this and are primarily made from cement and fine aggregates. Let's dive in into the cost comparison between bricks and hollow blocks. Basically, we are going to divide this page into three columns. The first column will be for bricks in stretcher bond, the second column will be for bricks in header bond and the third column will be for hollow blocks which are always arranged in stretcher bond. Example, considering a wall of 4 meters along the length and 2 meters along the height, that means that this wall is 8 meters squared or 8 square meters. Therefore, the wall that we are going to use in this example is 8 square meters. For those of you who don't clearly understand the difference between header bond and stretcher bond, the shorter side of the brick is forming the thickness of the wall in stretcher bond, whereas the longer side of the brick is forming the thickness of the wall in header bond. Considering bricks of 230 mm along the length, 150 mm along the width and height at 70 mm, and hollow blocks of 400 mm along the length, with it as 150mm and height as 100mm, we shall have 48 bricks for 1 square meter in stretcher bond, 65 bricks for 1 square meter in header bond and for hollow blocks, you will need 11 blocks for 1 square meter. We are going to use US dollars as the standard currency in this example since we are from different countries, you can still convert into your local currency and get the concept very well. So one clay brick will cost you around 10 cents. Of course, you'll find those that are slightly more or slightly less, but on average, the price of one clay brick will cost you around 10 cents. Then we shall consider each hollow block to be around 67 cents. We shall have 48, which is the number of bricks in one square meter, times 8, which is the area for the wall, times 10 cents, which is the cost for each brick. Same here, 65 times 8, times 10 cents, then for hollow blocks, we are going to have 11 blocks per square meter times 8 square meters times 67 cents, which is the price for each hollow block. We get 38.4 US dollars here. We get 52 US dollars here. And then for hollow blocks, this will be 58.96 US dollars. From all the three, you can see that the cost of purchasing is high for hollow blocks, but remember you have not considered the mortar joints. We mix cement and sand to make mortar which you use to bind bricks and blocks. So we are going to consider the cost of cement that we use when binding the bricks and blocks. One bag of cement will complete approximately 4 square meters in stretcher bond. For header bond, one bag will complete approximately 2 square meters and then for hollow blocks, one bag of cement can take you up to 8 square meters. So you can see that we use less cement when using hollow blocks. Therefore, to complete the 8 square meters wall that we used in our example, we shall use 8 divided by 4. 8 is the total area of the wall that we used or that we have, then 4 is the number of square meters which can be completed using one bag of cement. So we shall say 8 divided by 4 which will give us 2 bags of cement for stretcher bond, 8 divided by 2 which will give us 4 bags of cement in header bond and 8 divided by 8 which will give us 1 bag of cement when using hollow blocks. Considering one bag of cement to be at 10 US dollars, we shall use 20 US dollars here, 40 US dollars here and 10 US dollars here. So this is the amount that we have spent on buying cement and this is the amount that we have spent on buying bricks and blocks as well. Let's add these two here and see what the total will bring us to. So this will be 38.4 US dollars plus 20 US dollars. This will give us 58 US dollars here. 
then 52 us dollars plus 40 us dollars which will give us 92 us dollars here and then for hollow blocks 58.96 us dollars plus 10 us dollars which will give us 68.96 us dollars and now from these three you can see that bricks in header bond are becoming more expensive than the rest also remember that the more cement you use the more sand you also use when we consider the cost of labor and plastering the walls you will find that the cost of these two are increasing while this one is decreasing for example for labor to build one square meter in stretcher bond Mansons will charge you around three US dollars to build one square meter in header bond Mansons will charge you around 3.8 US dollars then for hollow blocks Mansons will charge you around 1.3 US dollars to build one square meter this is because it takes a lot of time to bind these very many bricks compared to a single block because blocks are large in size. So there is faster construction process that's why you are charged less when constructing using hollow blocks. Let's add up the general cost for labor and material. This is labor and this is material. When we sum up these two, we shall get 82.4 US dollars for stretcher bond, 122.4 US dollars for header bond, and 79.36 US dollars for hollow blocks. I hope you realize that we are spending less money on using hollow blocks compared to the rest of other options. In summary, this option of using clay bricks is more expensive compared to this option of using hollow blocks. Also remember that hollow blocks require less mortar when plastering compared to bricks because hollow blocks have flat and even surfaces and less mortar joints hence using less money when plastering. Breakages in hollow blocks are negligible, almost 100% utilization is possible. Unlike bricks where breakage and wastage goes up to 33% during loading and offloading. Another advantage of using hollow blocks is that the loading on the structure is very low due to the gap or space in the middle of the hollow block. There is low labor cost and faster construction process when using hollow blocks. On the other hand, we use clay bricks in the foundation not hollow blocks because these bricks have a low water absorption and more stability. Therefore, you can opt for clay bricks in the foundation or plinth wall and then hollow blocks for superstructure. That's how it's always done. Clay bricks in the foundation and then hollow blocks for superstructure. That's the end of our today's video. I hope now you have a clear view about which of the two is a cost friendly option between bricks and hollow blocks. Be sure to also watch this video about all you need to know about Beaver blocks. It's really really helpful. Thank you so much for watching.